If you're watching this on YouTube and you have a question, comment, suggestion, or maybe you just want to find out more information about the product, you can find the link below. Hello again, I'm Rodney Reynolds from 3GameMan.com and welcome to another video review. Today I'm looking at the ASUS Tor AS302T Multimedia Network Attached Storage Server. A fairly plain looking box, you can see that they have their logo on it and some information about the product along with the picture. There's a convenient carry handle at the top. Now let's go ahead and open it up and see what's inside. It's packaged very well between two pieces of quality styrofoam one at the top and there's another piece at the bottom. Included is the server, which is in a plastic bag. Very nice. As well as an accessory box and let's see what's in this. An installation CD, an RJ45 cable, and this is a category 5E. A power cord for the power adapter, a number of screws for installing three and a half inch and two and a half inch drives, and a user's guide. Now for this review they included a remote control but this is optional although I would recommend getting it. Let me just see what this looks like. Pretty basic remote control, but it does have pretty much the functions that you'll need to navigate the menu and play and pause your movies and videos and that type of thing. Now this in essence is a mini computer system. It has an Intel Atom 1.6 gigahertz dual core processor on the inside. There's one gigabyte of DDR3 memory and you can put two and a half inch and three and a half inch drives inside of this. You can see that there is two drive compartments. I'll have a look at that and how you install the drives in it a little later on. Now as for drive compatibility, this will fit just about any recent Serial ATA2 or Serial ATA3 drive, but make sure to check their website on compatible drives. Now let me really quickly go through some of the ports and connections and other specifications, but I'll have a closer look at them a little later on. It has four USB connections, two USB 3 and two USB 2, a gigabit Ethernet port, an HDMI 1.4a connection, along with a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, as well as a 70 millimeter fan and an infrared receiver for that remote control. Now the power consumption on this will vary anywhere from 20 to around one watt. And of course that's going to depend on what drives you have installed. The noise level is around 24 decibels, so really quiet. Now since this is a two drive network attached storage device, it's pretty compact, measuring in at 163.5 millimeters high by 108 millimeters wide by 230 millimeters long. And it weighs in at a very lightweight 1.87 kilograms or 4.12 pounds and of course that is not with drives installed. With drives installed of course it's going to be a little bit heavier. Now the feature list on this is incredibly long so let me try and summarize it as best as I can. The operating system here is GUI based so it's very easy to navigate. It has ADM2 and up built-in apps and all kinds of them. The supported operating systems include Windows XP, Vista 7, 8, as well as Server 2003, 2008, and Server 2012, including the Mac OS X 10.6 and upwards, and the Unix, Linux, and BSD operating systems. Supported languages are many. Supported browsers include the popular ones, Internet Explorer 9, Firefox, Chrome, and Safari. The network protocols I will list on the screen. As for file system internally, you're gonna have ext4 externally, FAT32, NTFS, ext3, ext4, and HFS+. Storage management includes JBOD, RAID 0, or RAID 1. 
Now, online rate support includes level migration as well as capacity expansion. As for the iSCSI features, which by the way stands for Internet Small Computer System Interface, and that is basically an internet protocol based storage networking standard for linking data storage. The maximum targets is 256. The maximum LUNs is 256 as well. It has target masking, LUN mapping, ISO file mounting, supports MCS and persistent SCSI 3 reservations. As for disk management, you can schedule bad block scans as well as scheduling smart scans. The network configuration will vary. It depends on really what you want to go with. TCP IP version 4 and version 6 are both supported. A jumbo frame, MTU, VLAN cloud support, wireless network as well as long as you have the optional wireless adapter and depending upon compatibility DDNS and easy router. As for backup solutions you've got remote backup, cloud backup, FTP backup, external backup and one touch backup. As for system administration I'll list that on the screen but you can look at the system log, the connection log, the real-time online user monitor, real-time system monitor and so on. As for access control the number of users you can have is 4096 the number of groups 512 the number of shared folders 512 as well and the same 512 for concurrent connections and it also supports Windows Active Directory and as for security they have you covered with AES 256 bit folder encryption it comes with a firewall a network defender it will also email you or text you alert notifications the encrypted connections include HTTPS FTP over SSL TLS SSH, SFTP, and Remote Sync over SSH. Now let's have a closer look. At the front left is their logo. On the left side there are a number of LEDs for power, hard drive activity, server access. At the bottom left there's a USB 3 port. At the top right is an infrared sensor for the remote control. And here are the two drive cages. And these of course are removable and you can fit either a two and a half inch or three and a half inch drive in them. Notice as well that they have hard drive activity LEDs here on each of the drive cages. In order to install a two and a half inch or three and a half inch drive in either one of these cages you will first need to press here at the bottom and then pull it out insert the drive whether it is a two and a half inch or three and a half inch drive use the included screws and once you've done that just slide it right back in and here's what it looks like with a two and a half inch drive installed it could be a hard drive or a solid state drive use the included screws and then slide it in and lock it into place. Now just have a look at some of the LEDs on the front. You can see that they are a combination of blue and green. On the left side they have ventilation and that's to allow the back 70 millimeter fan to intake cool air from the front and then pass that cool air through the system and then port all the warm air out the back. At the back they include a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, a tiny hole for resetting the unit. They include three USB ports back here. One is a USB 3 port and the other two are USB 2 ports. They include a gigabit LAN port as well as a 1.4A HDMI connection. Here's where the power adapter gets connected and you can secure this if you want to using a Kensington lock. At the bottom they include four rubber feet and a couple of information stickers here and the one that's under my thumb has the model number as well as the MAC address on it. Setup is super easy. The first thing to do is use their installation CD or download the control center from their website. Once you've done so and installed it, this will appear. Gives you information about the system as well as the network. From there, you move on to initialize the network attached storage server. Make sure at least one hard drive is installed. You've got an option then to either do a live update, which I would recommend, or you can manually update it if you prefer. Then it will start to configure the NAS and to do that it will download the file, partition and format the hard drive, unpack the firmware, update the system and then restart the network attached storage server. Then you set up the 
hard drive or hard drives, you can do a one-click setup, which is recommended, or if you want to, you can do a custom setup. And from there, you enter the server's name. You can choose to leave it the same. Also enter a password, and you can choose maximum capacity, superior data protection, balance, and then just click on I confirm and go next, and it will continue to set everything up. And then you can choose to register if you want to. At first, you'll get this little welcome pop-up message, and it can tell you how you manage your storage space, accounts and privileges, services, how you unleash the unlimited potential of the NAS, and protect your digital assets as well as accessing your NAS anywhere. Now this is the operating system and they include a number of different apps which you can easily click on. I've installed a couple extra here though, Plex and XBMC for watching all my movies and TV shows and looking at pictures and so on and so forth. But let's start here. First, at Access Control. Here we can set up local users, local groups, domain users, domain groups, shared folders, as well as a virtual drive, and application privileges for apps as well as users. Within Activity Monitor, you can monitor the activity of the CPU, memory, network, disk usage, and the processes that are running. Within the App Center, it will show you the installed apps. You can update the apps if there are any to update. You can manually install them. It shows a log. You can see all of the different apps. You can also search if you want to. These are their own apps, top apps, the latest apps, search by category if you want to, and some beta apps. Online help is very comprehensive. They've got help here for just about everything and it is extremely useful. You can do backup and storage, you can do a remote sync, FTP backup, external backup, a one-touch backup. You can set up cloud service if you want to and the system settings. Within external devices, see the disk itself, the printer, Wi-Fi if you have it set up, as well as UPS, this is the battery time and so on. Within File Explorer, this is well your file system on your NAS. And you can upload, create a folder. Within Services, Windows, you've got File Service, Active Directory, Mac OS X, a few options in here. NFS, you can enable or disable that, FTP server, web DAV, web server, MySQL server, terminal, as well as remote sync. Within settings, general, you've got management, media mode, network, general setup, and you can change the server name here if you want to. LAN, you can set it to a permanent IP address and I would really recommend doing that instead of an automatic one because it could be automatically changing all the time and could be an issue for you. If you have the Wi-Fi installed, an option that is, so if you do that you'll see information here about it come up. Virtual private network setup. Your regional options, these are your date and time, time zone, the language setup for your area, your hardware, your system. And this is pretty neat. You can choose to show the LEDs. You can disable them all if you want to, or some, doesn't matter. Buzzers as well, same thing. And you can actually even disable the reset button. Within the disk, you can choose the hibernation, power options, as well as fan control options. By the way, I'm going to just start it here. It's in the background, it's probably four feet away from me. And you'll hear the fan, which is now on high speed. It's not that loud on high speed, but certainly if you're watching a movie, it will be irritating. If you leave it, though, in an automatic mode, it gets super quiet. I'll set it to low speed right away. And it does take a little while for it to change. 
but now you can't hear it at all. It's virtually silent. You can change the notification settings, send, receive, push notifications. ADM, this is the defender. You can allow all connections. You can de deny all connections. You can add, uh, you know, what you want here and which connections and what, who can connect. And the network defender, you can enable that if you want to. And um, let me just show you how that works. You can, for example, change the login attempts, the time period, and the block uh, period as well, in case someone's trying to get in. This is the update. Now, this is a recycle bin, which is pretty cool because if you delete something accidentally, it won't be deleted. It'll go into a recycle bin instead. You've got an energy saving option here where you can just do the recommended setting or you can customize it. Ease of access, you can do the cloud connect, an easy router or DDNS. You can do a factory default if you want to set everything basically back to the way it was. And here's the registration information. Let's continue here within storage management. Here you'll see the drive or drives that you have installed. You can create and um, as well you can set up the disk doctor to monitor the driver drive itself in case something goes wrong it will tell you and also shows you some information here. And this is the iSCSI settings. System information just shows you the information about the system network information, the log, online user, and the doctor. Now this is very helpful, I have to say. Um, it basically will diagnose any kind of problems that you have and it will offer very useful suggestions. I'm a big fan of both Plex and XBMC because they are so good at organizing all of your movies, TV shows, music, photos, and more. To install them, go to App Central, just do a search and go ahead and add them to all of your other apps that you have. And you might necessarily want to go with Plex or XBMC. They have other apps as well that might suit your needs. Now with XBMC, once you've installed it, it will require you to restart the NAS server. But once you've done that, that's pretty much it. Just connect a TV to the NAS server using an HDMI cable and you are ready to go and configure XBMC. You can even download the XBMC remote app on, for example, your or tablet or smartphone and use it to navigate XBMC. Or of course you could use the optional remote control that they provide. Now speaking of apps, they have their own. It's called AI Master. To add your NAS server, click on the plus symbol that is at the top left hand corner. You can usually find it with auto discovery. If not, you can connect via IP or host name. You can also connect via cloud ID. Once you've found your NAS server, click on it. And as you can see, you pretty much have the same functionality as you do on your desktop. At the top right, you've got the settings. And here you can sign out. You've got a night mode, put it in the sleep, restart, or shut it down. Now, if all you want to do is back up your important data, an external drive will do fine, and this would be overkill. However, if you're looking for a multimedia network-attached storage server that you can hook right up to your TV and you can dump Everything that you've got on it, documents, files of any sort, pictures, videos, movies, TV shows, whatever you want on this. And the software that they include is super intuitive. They have lots of apps. You can install more. It comes with plenty of connections on it. So you've got room to grow. And as well, I think it looks really nice. Now they have more advanced multimedia NAS servers like the 600 series, which are tweaked. And the software includes more options, more apps, and you've got the ability to install more drives. But still, this has major bang for the buck. It is affordable and it's jam packed full of excellent features. Overall, this is a 100% kick-ass product. Until next time, take care. How do you think this product stacks up? To vote, head on over to 3dgameman.com and while you're there, check out the pricing.